What's up guys, Coach Mandler here, Team Swole Patrol. In today's video, we're going to talk about something that might be a bit of an afterthought for many of you out there, but is dramatically reducing the quality of each and every one of the reps that you perform and is reducing your ability to lift some big ass bar bending weights. I'm talking about your ability to breathe properly and to brace effectively so that you reduce any of the power leaks that are causing you to leave weights or leave poundage on the platform and possibly snap your back up, okay? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, my God, any dumb, simple-minded, knuckle-dragon, meat-headed, one plus one, not knowing what it is, fool, even a fucking mouth breather can figure out how to breathe properly when exercising. But, it's not the case. And I'm going to tell you why and how to prevent improper breathing from jacking up your performance in today's video so that you can lift powerfully and without the harm that it could be causing your body. Now, before I share with you any of the cues and tips for how to automatically correct your breathing so that you can brace harder and prevent any of the power leaks that are causing you to leave pounds on the platform and also causing you to possibly get your back all dicked up, what I first need to do is share with you the difference between breathing and bracing. And I'm gonna make it very elementary here. Breathing is very simple, uh, just respiration. Breathe in, breathe out. The problem is a lot of people are breathing wrong. And bracing is going to be very simply contracting the muscles surrounding your spine, um, in order to create more intra-abdominal pressure and create a more stiff and rigid environment to prevent any power leaks and prevent your back from being put in position to get dicked up. So here's the relationship. One facilitates a stronger reaction or action for the other. And proper breathing mechanics and positioning of your diaphragm and your pelvic floor allow for a, a bigger breath that allows for a stronger bracing technique for more intra-abdominal pressure. And the more intra-abdominal pressure that you have, the more force you can apply with the muscles surrounding your spine, the more ability you're going to have to reduce power leaks and to be able to apply more of the force that's necessary to overcome whatever fucking weight you're trying to lift. So, what I'm gonna do right now is to tell you a little bit about the mistakes people are making so commonly with their breathing and how they can automatically fix that so it doesn't cause a drop in the performance of your ability to brace harder and thus lift less weight and cause your back to get all smacked around. So, let's first talk about the simple mistake that you can fix right now that will make you breathe better and allow you to brace harder. All right, so the simple mistake I see people making far too commonly with their breathing is that they're breathing vertically instead of horizontally. And what I mean by that is this. Instead of doing chest breathing to where you're taking deep breaths, in your chest, and you see my clavicles rise up, that is what I call vertical breathing, okay? What you want to do instead that will cause you to be in a position to where your, your diaphragm and your uh, pelvic floor are in parallel and allow you to take more air into the belly so that you can be in position to brace harder is what's called horizontal breathing. That is diaphragmatic breathing, okay? Some people call it belly breathing, but I'm not a fan of calling it that because too often people think that just means you're trying to pull air into your belly and that's it. The actual proper way to do it is to take air into your belly, push out on your obliques, and even your lower back. So it's 360 degrees horizontal expansion so that you can create more intra-abdominal pressure and brace harder for reduced power leaks and more bracing capabilities that prevent your back from getting dicked up. So here's a couple simple things you can do to make sure you're breathing proper, you know, properly and to prevent a dip in the effectiveness of your body's ability to brace harder. All right, for this simple drill, all you're going to need is a very light kettlebell, nothing more than probably 25 pounds, 
and put it right in your belly and while maintaining a neutral spine you want to see that kettlebell while you're breathing visually go up higher and at a faster rate than your chest does. This will assure that you have quality diaphragmatic breathing. Alright, so that kettlebell drill is going to be fantastic for teaching you the difference between vertical chest breathing and horizontal diaphragmatic breathing. But one of the things that uh, a lot of people make the mistake of is thinking that they're just supposed to pull air into their belly. And that's not quite the case. Yes, you want to pull air into your belly, but you need to focus on pulling air in a 360 degree manner. Think of everything surrounding your spine as an area that you need to pull air into. Think of this area like a balloon. While you're taking that deep belly breath, if you will, that Buddha breath, you want to focus on inflating this entire area not just your belly. And a lot of people have problems with inflating the sides and the lower back. So the simple exercise you can do here, the simple drill, is to essentially kind of ride the coattails of that first kettlebell drill that we did. And instead of putting a kettlebell or any weight on your, your, your sides or your back, what we're going to do is just take our hands, place them right in the, uh, the kind of external oblique area, breathe out, Relax, all right, and then take a deep breath in. Now, if you notice while I was doing that, what happened when I take that deep diaphragmatic breath inside everything surrounding my spine, what happened was that pressure that was created from um, inhaling, all right, what happened was it pushed out. That's what you want to think about doing. Think of that deep breath in is air going into that balloon and inflating it. All right? If you're doing this drill and not seeing your hands being forced out and instead you're seeing that chest expand and your clavicle is rising, you know you're still doing it wrong. That is the vertical chest breathing that you want to stop. Instead, focus on driving those hands out and that will give you that 360 degree diaphragmatic breathing that you need to do in order to facilitate a stronger ability for a stronger brace. Now the last thing I want to talk about in regards to proper breathing and how it leads to more effective bracing and uh, the, the increased intra-abdominal pressure that allows you to reduce power leaks in your lifts is positioning of your diaphragm and your pelvic floor. Now, as I said earlier in this video, if you want to have the maximal um, effectiveness of uh, your bracing capabilities, you want to create as much intra-abdominal pressure as possible. And in order to do that, your breathing has to be you know, as, as crisp and on point as you can. And for that, we want to pull as much air into this area as possible. And that is impossible if you do not have your diaphragm and your pelvic floor in parallel. Okay, so uh, where I'm going with this is that a lot of power lifters have either mild or um, extreme amounts of anterior pelvic tilt and whenever that's the case what's going to happen is your pelvic floor is going to tip forward some and when that's the case you're not going to be in parallel okay so when when that's going to happen or if on, on the higher end you're always walking around with with a big chest you know got that johnny badass look your diaphragm is going to be elevated so you're not going to be in parallel now how does that, you know, how does that cause a reduction in the quality of your breathing and thus a reduction in the quality of your bracing? Very simple, you're not going to be able to inflate as much. So in order to immediately correct that, make sure your body and your spine is in complete alignment. You're in neutral alignment and that way, once your, your pelvic floor and your diaphragm are in complete alignment, they're, they're in parallel rather, you're going to be able to pull more air into this area and thus be able to brace harder. So next time you go to squat or you go to deadlift or overhead press, make sure before you have a good big ass diaphragmatic breath that you're going to pull in and before you use that to brace harder, you make sure that your pelvic floor and your diaphragm 
are parallel because if your butt is out or your chest is up, you're not going to be able to expand as much and pull as much air into your belly, which is going to reduce the quality and the effectiveness of your body's ability to brace harder, create more intra-abdominal pressure, and to be able to reduce the power leaks that are causing you to leave pounds on the platform and smack around your back. So, in order to correct this, make sure they're in alignment, or rather they're parallel with each other, and that you are increasing the volume of air in this area as much as possible. Doing that will set you up for a stronger brace, and stronger bracing, more intra-abdominal pressure in this area will lead to bigger lifts and reduction in your ability to get your shit snapped up. So, hopefully that makes sense. If not, leave a question down below and I will get to it as soon as possible. Hey guys, hopefully that uh, video didn't bore you to death, didn't go over your head. If anything, take home message here is that even though it might seem like a minute detail to you, it plays a dramatic role in the effectiveness of every single rep and every single set, every single routine that you do inside the gym. Breathing and bracing are very important in regards to lifting to get better results and lifting to reduce the, the, the possibility of snapping up your back. So in order to, uh, to, to really get the most from your training, even these small details play a massive role into helping you build that jacked, diesel ripped, kick ass physique that you're looking for. And if that is the case for you, you want to learn more about how you can program for, for faster and more, um, more badass gains in muscle mass and your ability to, to look and perform like an ass kicking machine, then be sure to pick up your free copy of the muscle building blueprint that I put together for you by clicking on this button right here or going down in the description area right down there and clicking on the first link that you see. When you do that, I'm going to take you to that free gift page which outlines every free module inside this gift as well as what you got to do in order to allow me to email it directly to your inbox right this very second. Like I said, it's completely free of charge and is going to help you dial in what it takes in order to put together better programs that lead to better and faster results. So if that's something you're interested in, just click right here or down there in the, uh, the description area of the video and I will take you to that free gift page which breaks it all down for you. Of course, before you leave, do me a solid if you haven't done so already. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the kick-ass tips and routines that I'll be hooking you up with in the future. And if you have a question for me in regards to your training or your diet, simply leave that question in the comment section below and I'll answer it quick, fast, and in a hurry via an Ask Mandler video. Appreciate your time, guys. Have a good one. Mandler.